Hello there all my lovely jewelry makers, I'm Christina of CSL Designs and in today's tutorial I'm going to show you how to make this music bracelet with wire. So I just made two different versions here to show you how you can really personalise it depending on your own preference. So I made one that's more freeform and the notes are kind of dancing on the lines and I also added the word music as well just for a little extra touch. And in the other version I actually followed the real notes off of one of my favourite songs. And in case you're wondering, that song is Somewhere Only We Know by Keen. But it's just to show you how you can really make this personal. Maybe use your favourite song or someone else's and give it as a present. So if you want to learn how to make your own, then keep watching. So these are the materials that we'll need. I have three different gauges of wire here. So first of all, I have a 0.8 mil. This is what I'm going to use to shape all the notes with. And then next here I have a 0.3 mil. I'm going to use this fine gauge wire to attach the notes onto the base wires. And as for the base wire, I'm using this 1.25 millimeter gauge, so pretty thick because we need it to be nice and strong. And also, as you can tell, I chose to work with two different colors here. So for the base wire, I'm using a silver coated copper wire, and the other two wires, I'm using a copper wire. And that is just to make the notes stand out from the base wire nicely, but of course you can choose whatever colors that you want to work with. And then here I also have my ribbon ends that I'm going to use to finish off the ends of the bracelet with. So they get a nice clean finish and also they have these little loops so we can attach findings. So of course it's our clasp, just use whatever kind of clasp you prefer. And also alongside the ribbon ends I'm going to be using this E6000 glue to make it nice and strong. It works really well with these materials. And of course you can check out the description box below the video where I'm going to have the material list and some links as well that might be useful. And then I also have a range of pliers here that I'm going to use to shape the notes with. Now I've got two different flush cutters here. So first of all, these flush cutters are for thicker gauge wire. So that's mainly because I'm using the thick gauge for the base wire. So I'm going to use them to cut that. And then I have my finer flush cutters here. I'm going to use those to finish off the ends of my wire on everything else that I'm making. So that's why I've got two different flush cutters. Just make sure that the cutters you're using will fit the wire that you're going to be cutting. Then I've got my trusted tweezer nose pliers that are pretty much permanently attached to my hands and also some round nose pliers. Now I'm using these because I just need to occasionally be able to make little tiny loops with the very tips and of course also I have my six step bell making pliers. Again that's to be able to make certain curves and shapes in the exact size that I want. I'm also going to be leaving links for these tools in the description box down below if you want to have a closer look. Now along with the wire I do recommend using something like this to help hold the base wire lengths in place while we're working with them. So here for instance this is a spring clamp, it just opens up and you can add your wires in there and it's really strong so it will hold on to exactly where you place your wires instead of them moving all around or you could use this which is a ring clamp, same principle, just take that out and then add your wire lengths in there and put that back in and it just helps hold your wires in place when we're going to be attaching all the notes to them. So first of all these four notes here which I think are also the most recognizable ones I'm not going to show you how to make in this video because I already have a video where I made these specific notes. Now I did turn those into charms so these two final ones I did add a loop at the top. I didn't for these two because they already have a way to attach. But basically you would make them the same way that I did in that video. Just obviously leave out that loop at the top because we won't need that because we'll be attaching these differently. So instead of showing you how to make them in this video again, I'm just going to leave a link in the description box down below to that video. So you can go there and look at that to make these specific notes. Now if you also want to make the word music with a little frame around it here, I've already shown how to do this in a different video. So what I'm going to do is leave a link to that in the description box down below. And you will just make sure to stop at the point here before we finish off the frame. So the first thing we want to do is cut some lengths of wire to start creating our notes. And I like to just cut several lengths and have them handy and ready to use. So these are of the 0.8mm and they're about 15 centimeters each. So again, it's not specifically they have to be this length. I just find that it's a pretty nice length to work with. So for instance, I have a wire ready, I'm just going to grab that and start creating a note. Now obviously different notes will require a different amount of wire, so sometimes 
you would use majority of this wire for a note or sometimes you'd only use some of it and you could use the rest for a different note that also doesn't use a lot of wire. And also of course it depends how large you want to make your notes as well. So this is just what I personally like to work with. So I have this bunch ready that I can then just grab a length of wire from whenever I need it. So then to make this triple note here where we have the bars connecting at the top so this is actually made of two separate pieces and they will then be attached together once we attach them to a final piece. So I grab a length of my wire and I'm then going to be working with my tweezer nose pliers here. So I'm going to place my pliers onto the wire towards one end but leaving a bit of a tail. So roughly about five centimeters or so in from the end and then I have long length on the other side and then I'm going to bend that long end against my pliers and we want to achieve a 90 degree angle. So get it as precise as possible there. Just bend the wire against the pliers until we have a 90 degree angle and also make sure that the wire is straight. So something like that. Now what we need to do is if we look at the regular note like that but obviously we want to add one more to it so what I'm going to do is make sure to now place my pliers not where we'd come down to create that regular note I just showed you but basically double the length or width however you want to look at it and again once you're there then take that long length we're working with and again bend it against the pliers so we again achieve that 90 degree angle and basically it's now coming up next to the other tail there. So something a bit like that. And then from there again working with the same long end I'm placing my tweezer nose pliers here. Now these pliers I find are perfect for this because they have very narrow tip there. So I'm basically using the pliers in this case to help get the right sizing and also make it nice and symmetrical. So I'm going to place my pliers, the very tip there, onto this length right up against the corner, basically until they won't go any further. And then I'm going to take the length of wire and bend it against the pliers, now coming towards the other tail. And I'm making sure that it's going underneath the other tail. And then basically have it come straight over towards there and be right next to the other length. So we kind of create this little bar at the top of the note. That's what this is going to be. So again, get that 90 degree bend in. So we have something like this so far. Then I'm going to, again, to kind of just use the shapes as well as guidance. So I'll place my pliers now on this length here and I'm going to place them up against the crossover point there because then that ensures that when we bend this length against the pliers it's going to bend so it fits perfectly right underneath the length that's already there so basically the wire on top here is kind of camouflage in the other one so if we look from the side we're going to end up having kind of two layers on top of each other so continuing further around again now I'm placing my pliers and again because I'm using these and I use these as the guide on the other side I know they're going to fit perfectly on this side as well I can place my pliers right in there make sure the two sides are close up against them and then as I bend my wire again against the pliers this is again going to be underneath the shape that we already made so kind of camouflaging underneath and we get this corner in place and then we have it overlapping there now you can always just adjust anything to make sure it overlaps nicely and then I'm going to place my pliers so that when we bend this wire again against the pliers it's going to basically come down through the middle of the bar, you could say. 
and become the middle note. So place your pliers, not quite in the middle, but so, like I said, when you bend the wire, the wire is in the middle. So just a little bit off from the middle. And then again, wire against the pliers, get a 90 degree angle straight down again. So it's next to the other length, kind of running down next to it. And again, make sure that the wire is nice and straight here. Obviously, if you need to straighten anything out, you can always just do that with your fingers. And then we have kind of the top part in place for this one. Just make sure everything is how we want it to be. Now, obviously, we just got to create the bottom as well. So I'm going to take again, I'm just going to be using these same pliers. So I like to start with the one that's going to be the middle note first of all, just for easiness of how the wires are going to cross over and under each other. And basically this is where you place your pliers now will depend on the note itself and how you want it to look. Because obviously if you're following something specific, then you'll need to kind of place them according to that. So I'm just going to do is place my pliers and then start bending the wire against the pliers and I'm just going to make sure it crosses over the other one. But I'm not going to put in a 90 degree angle like before because this is just kind of to help start the shape in place. I don't want it to be as harsh of a bend but then when I have a little bit of an angle there then I'm going to grab onto further out on the wire and start bringing it around and by grabbing further out you'll get a nicer curve coming around and just keep bringing it around in towards basically the pliers again and then this is again up to you how you want this to look so basically how large you want this to be obviously in proportion to the rest of it as well but then get this further in and also I like to use my tweezer nose here to actually help shape this if you need to. Now obviously be careful with that because I want this to be a nice curved area so you can use these just make sure you don't squeeze really tight because that will then obviously straighten the wire but you can use them to kind of lightly grab the wire and guide it along into the exact position you want it to have. So getting this smaller and getting the shape that I want. And then also just want to kind of squeeze it a little bit to tighten it up, get it more the proper shape. Now obviously look from it, look at it from the right angle just to get a better impression. So it's just a little bit off still. But we're getting there and just tighten it a little bit more. I think we're about there now. Now, obviously, that's just the one. I need to also make one on this end of the wire. And again, where you place it, it really is up to you and depends on what you're doing with it. So same principle. I'm just placing the pliers. Bend the wire gently against the pliers, not a full 90 degree, but just a bit of an angle in there to kind of get the shape here started. And then further out, grabbing the wire and then just bringing it around. Until we get the shape. Now obviously, I now already have one that I made so I want to basically get this as similar to that as possible so let's have a little look I think it just needs to be a little bit smaller have a look from the front that's not too bad really so Something a bit like this. Now obviously this is just an example that I'm making here. 
Now I do just want to get rid of these ends of the wire obviously to kind of just finish it off. So for that I'm just going to grab my flush cutters so we can get a nice straight cut and then go in with the back there against the end and place the wire cutters right basically where the wire starts to overlap so the very back of the pliers is going to be towards the end that's going to be left on the piece placing them right where the crossover starts and then cut off the excess and then we can see from the front there that the end basically will meet up obviously right now it's not flat yet but it will end up meeting up with the side of itself so the very end will be against the wire which is how we then get rid of it and obviously make sure the wire is not sticking out to be able to scratch on anything same with the other one just place the pliers where that crossover starts and then cut the excess off and then final thing is to just as you can see they kind of open almost a bit like a jump ring but then we just need to close it up basically or flatten it down and the same with the other one so just like that so this is the first part of it now for the last part of it to complete it I'm grabbing another wire here and again my tweezers nose pliers now this is not going to be as much we need to do because we just need to create the part on this end here that's going to obviously complete it so again I'm placing the pliers towards one end but making sure I leave a bit of a tail so what you can always do as well is use this that we just made for reference because obviously we need to make it match size wise so we basically need to have enough here to be able to make the bottom part and that little rounded bottom so that's fine we can start there but then we need to basically shape this part so again I just bend the long end there against my pliers to create that 90 degree angle and now I like to then grab the piece I already made for reference like I said and then place it where it would end up laying so I'm just holding it with my hands for now because then I need to know where to place my pliers for the next bend so basically that will be up against what's going to be the middle nope and up against the back of that wire so something a bit like that and then bend the wire against the pliers now downwards again to go next to the other length again a 90 degree angle so something a bit like that and now I have this shape in place and now again I'm going to use the pliers themselves here and also so I know it will be exactly the same as the one I already made which is then handy using if you can use the pliers to actually help create the shape and the size but then otherwise push the wire against the pliers there to kind of create this little bar and this time I brought the length underneath the other end and then here we need to bring it back upwards and basically it's going to be two layers of wire then once we've done that so again place the wires kind of in this corner so we won't go any further and then just bring the wire up at 90 degree angle and it's now kind of camouflaging underneath the other one and that's now coming straight up now obviously on the bottom we also just need to create the note so again I'm placing 
this with the other half that I did. And again, this will depend on how you want yours to look or if you're obviously following something specific, where you then need to place the bottom part here. So I'm gonna make it match the other one. So I think I'll do it somewhere roughly here. And of course, same principle, I just push the wire against the pliers, but not for a 90 degree angle. I just want the, to kind of start off the shape and then grab further out and bring it around to create a similar shape to the ones I've already done as possible. And obviously size wise as well. So bring that around and of course just bring the other one in and you can compare and see if you think they match pretty nicely in size. It's not too bad. I think you just want to pull it just a little bit further. Just double check and then obviously you can see as well how it's going to end up looking. I think that's pretty good. So now let's just get rid of the excess which is the same, take my flush cutters and I want to get rid of this end here on the bottom part. So same principle, the back of the wire cutters, the flush cutters, go against the end that's going to stay on the piece so it becomes nice and flush and cut literally where the crossover starts. So we can then just flatten it like a jump ring being closed basically. And then we have the other half of the note. And then I'm going to leave it at this for now because we won't kind of attach these two pieces together until we're actually attaching them to the base wires. But if you imagine, I had the first half there and then the other half is going to be placed basically to complete it and then they'll obviously get attached to stay in place where we want them to be once we attach these to the piece like I said but this is going to be the look of the final note in this case here obviously where we have three of them now obviously I also left this long length that is because I'm again going to use this wire itself to actually help attach to the piece so I'm not going to cut it off because we might as well use it to attach for a little bit more security. And then we're going to be making the crotchet rest that looks like this. So grabbing a length of wire here and my tweezer nose pliers to begin with and I'm placing them starting about five centimeters or so in from the end. And then I want to bend the long end here that mainly we'll be working with for now against my pliers and bring it all the way basically all the way around to go next to itself. So get this pretty sharp. Now you can also kind of just tighten it up a bit. Now I'm then just swapping to my six double making pliers here because I want to make sure I get a bit more of a curve in this section and I'm just kind of using the smallest one. So I'm kind of getting as close in as I can working with that long end still into this little kind of bend that we've made. But obviously the pliers won't go all the way in so just start as close in as you can and then just start to roll the wire inwards. That will then also bring this wire up in a different direction which is what we want. So bringing this further and further in kind of making this space shorter and shorter. Yeah, we're pretty much getting there, I think. Now, this has gone over a bit too much, so all I'm gonna do is straighten it back up and kind of come more 
upwards and away in this direction. So we now have something that looks a little bit like that. So basically we have this long length coming out kind of a 90 degree angle from that little length of wire. So if we kind of ignore this bottom part, so we look there, but because we use these pliers here instead of say the tweezer nose pliers, it's more of a curved corner, which is what we wanted. And then it comes out in this direction. Now I'm just gonna flip my pliers around. Again, so I'm using the smalls one. You can also use round nose pliers for this just as well. And then go up a little bit further where my straight wire is and then bend the wire against the pliers now in the opposite direction there. So we kind of get this almost little zigzag section. And again, because I'm using these pliers is now a soft corner, so basically round it off there. So, again, if we ignore this first length of wire, you can kind of see the shape. So we're almost looking at, we're pretty much looking at 90 degree angles here on these ones, but just with soft corners. Then grabbing my tweezer nose again, and I'm placing them after that last corner that we just made, just after that basically. So we're not too far out, but just a little bit. And then the wire here, I want to then bend over the top of itself, of the pliers here, back over itself. And make sure it's bending over the top, as opposed to underneath, in the opposite direction. Now what we then have is this little gap you can see, so what I like to do is just close that up tighten it. So basically put it right at the back of your pliers and tighten it so there you can see there's not as much air or space. So tighten that nicely. And then you have the wire coming down basically in the opposite direction than where it just was. Then going back to my six step bell making pliers there. Again still using that smallest one. Then I'm placing these pliers Again, continue with this length of wire that we're working with, but I'm placing it literally right after kind of where we made that bend, but as far as the pliers will go in. So it's gonna sit like that. And then I'm just gonna take the wire here and bend it against the pliers. Again, creating a little corner here, but obviously it's a rounded corner because of these pliers that we're using. So like that. And then we need for this wire to come back down again so I want my pliers to be placed somewhere like that but obviously kind of don't have space because of the other side of it so I can just flip it around and just grab it from the other side place it somewhere like that and then bend the wire against it and again creating that soft corner so when we flip it around and look from the proper side, you can see the effect that we now get and the shape we've ended up with. So this is basically the top part. So now we just need to move down and create the bottom part. And for that, I'm back to my tweezer nose and I'm gonna place them continuing on this wire. So after the corner that we just made, the rounded corner, place my pliers basically right after that. And again, I'm just using this other end, this actually where we started out, as a stopper. So I'm going to put my pliers against that and then just onto the length we're working with. And then we basically want to do the same as where we started out, where we bend it all the way back around and basically end up with this in more or less the same direction, just a little bit off from it like that. And then moving back to my six to bell making pliers again to get the curves in place. Now this time I'm actually using the second smallest one just because this curve I want to be a bit larger than the other corners that I've been making. So again, I'm grabbing onto the bottom one here and now because again, the pliers can't go as far in as I want them to, I have to start further out the wire. So just get the pliers into where they won't go any further, grab onto the wire and then start rolling it in. 
to create this curved shape and obviously bring it into the position that we actually want it in. So something, just a little bit more, just keep rolling it, a little bit like this, and again, can just open the bottom part back up if we need to, so we get exactly the shape that we want. Something a little bit like this. Now of course we need the other wire to then follow it so we can kind of get the wires in the same position and be able to finish them off. So again I'm going to place my pliers onto that as far as they'll go and then just start bending it but also then in relation to the other curve that I just did I can tell when I bring it a little bit further in so just roll it however you need to and then bring it towards the same direction as the other one so something a little bit like that and then I just need to finish off in this corner down here where the wires are basically meeting up so again grabbing my tweezer nose now I'm just going to start with this longer length that I have left in this case so kind of the top one you could say if you're looking at it from the right direction and I'm going to place my pliers onto my wire just before basically where I want the end to be and then I'm going to do the same as I did up here so we need to bend the wire back on itself and in this case and then bringing it underneath to go in the complete opposite direction and then again it's kind of open there so I want to close that up by grab hold of it nicely with my fingers and put it right at the back of the pliers and tightening it up so you can see the wire is now nice and tight and there's not really that gap anymore and then let me just grab my flush cutters because there's only really left to cut off the excess so if I just kind of move the other one a little bit have a look at that is where the wires kind of overlapping itself so right after where I made this bend is where I want to cut off the excess so just like that I'll just put that out of the way and we can just see that it's kind of we just made the bend and then I cut off the wires so there's just a little bit after the bend and then what I want to do is bring the other wire here just into position where it goes perfectly underneath so I cut this off and again I'm using the back of my pliers against where the end is going to be on the piece and I'm then cutting it so that once I cut it the end is going to perfectly align with the other end and they're going to meet up like that like that and then let's have a look see if they hopefully meet up it might just kind of pop in there by itself which I think it more or less has so basically it's perfectly in position now where the ends meet up like that now obviously it's still kind of an open gap in the sense that it opens up but that is basically now completed the very finishing point there and it's underneath the wire because of where we did the previous bend that we just did so you can't actually see it from the front that that's where the kind of end points of the wires are and then we're going to do an eighth or a quaver rest so then grabbing a length of wire here and then my tweezer nose now I'm just going to place my pliers onto my wire towards one end and we just need to leave a bit of length but it doesn't have to be too much because we're not actually going to be doing anything more with this end it's just going to be left straight so do make sure the wire is straight though and then I'm just going to bend the long end here back over the top of itself so completely back on itself so we end up with something like that now what I want to do then is again close up this gap 
Let's see if we were doing a prong. We get right at the back of the pliers and close it up nicely. So we basically get rid of that kind of gap between the wires. Just straighten it back out if you need to. So just something a bit like that is fine. Now what I then want to do is separate these two wires, but I'm doing it kind of in this direction where the wires are laying on top of each other. So I'm going to separate them sideways, you could say. And I like to kind of put my nail against, in this case here, I'm doing it against the bottom one because that's the one I kind of want to stay in place. And I'm then pulling the other one away from that to the side. So just a little bit. So I'm grabbing hold of that bottom one and then pulling the other one a bit to the side. It doesn't have to be too much in this case, not 90 degree or something, but something a bit like this. And of course, if this bottom one has gone a little bit out of shape, you can always straighten it back out. Now that we're in this position here, I'm then gonna grab my six step bell making pliers. You can use round those pliers. And I'm just gonna use the second smallest step and basically place them obviously on the way and that we're working with but as far in as you can get the pliers there in this little corner so they won't be able to go all the way in but just as far in as you can and then I basically want to roll it a little bit against the wire so it goes a little bit further up but then otherwise I'm going to bring the long end around the pliers almost will create a full circle here. So if we're looking from the proper direction. And actually from this I can tell I just want to roll it up a little bit more to kind of tighten it up. And obviously this will also determine how large it's going to end up being. Or something a little bit like that. And then I'm going to grab my round nose pliers just because I need to be able to get right to the tip because now what we need to do is create a little loop here but it needs to be very small so grabbing my round nose pliers, placing them we're kind of looking here in the right direction it's going to be it's kind of going to be at the top of the almost circle that we made so right around there so just place your pliers in there and then continue bringing the wire around in the same direction as we were doing but now obviously around these pliers here so it's going to end up getting a much smaller loop and almost creating a little bit of a spiral you could say something like that and then to finish it off I've just got to cut off the excess so I take my flush cutters and then go in and cut off the excess but so that when I've cut it the end of the wire that's going to be left is going to be able to build up against the side of itself. So if I just cut here and show you. So I'm basically wanting to cut right where the wire starts crossing over itself. And then in this case here, because this note obviously doesn't use as much wire, you'll likely be able to use the rest of this for something else or another one of these. Now. What I then mean with the wire there, the very end is, if you can kind of see, it's sticking out a little bit now, because obviously how we had the wire, but now that when I've cut it off, that very end, and I flatten it down, the end of the wire is now budding up against the side of itself, and basically kind of finishing off that little loop. And that's how we're going to then make sure that that wire isn't sticking out. Now obviously the other end here is just a straight piece of wire. All we need to do with that is cut it down to the right length. So again, I'm grabbing my wire cutters and what I like to do is kind of look at it from the front and make sure first of all the angle is right. So if you need to tighten it up more, move it in any way, which I think I just need to bring it over a little bit more towards the other side there. So that it kind of
kind of goes a little bit from one side to the other at an angle. This one. But then grabbing my flush cutters and I'm then going to cut basically obviously where the end is going to be. So that's what you just want to judge. Something around there. Now I'd rather cut off too little because then you can always obviously go in and cut more and make it shorter but obviously if you cut it too short then you can't really do anything about that. Now what I then like to do with this one because we have this open end I make sure I go in and I take my metal file and I basically just want to file the end because if you just cut it off it's quite rough and can be a bit sharp but then we just want to kind of smooth it out so we get a nicer end of the wire but then otherwise this note is now complete so now we'll need some lengths of our thick gauge base wire here and I have five lengths and they're all about 25 centimeters long now what you need to make sure of is that these are nice and straight so there's no kinks or bends in them and I do recommend straightening the wire while it's still on the reel before cutting it. It's much easier but otherwise I have my lengths here and these are going to be basically the lines all our notes are going to be placed on. So once you got all your notes done it's then time to start putting it all together. So I've taken my five lengths of thick gauge base wire that we're going to use for the lines for the notes to sit on there and I've added them into my, in this case I'm just using my ring clamp and I've put in, so there's about maybe a few centimeters to about five centimeters or so of ends in the clamp itself and then we're going to start attaching them to the lengths that are sticking out here and I've also made sure to add the lengths of wires and made sure there's a space between them as even as possible and then obviously the clamp is in there to hold them in this position as we're going to be working with them. So it's up to you really how much spacing you want between them because obviously that will also depend on say the size of notes that you made. So I'm just doing this for now. I think there's about a couple millimeters or so between each of the lengths of wire. I've then also just cut a length of my 0.3 mil wire here. No specific length, just really just not too long a length so it's difficult to work with but just kind of decent enough that we can comfortably work with it but this is also going to be enough to attach several notes so it's not just one length of wire here for one note or anything just a decent amount to work with that you feel comfortable with so I'm just going to basically go through and show you the principle of attaching the notes to these wires here because each note will be attached slightly differently because obviously the notes are different from each other and also it will really depend on your personal preference and also how you feel security wise how well they're attached so I'm just going to start with this single note there. Now obviously it's also up to you how you want this to look as when you're attaching them. So if you want to make it look like close to a proper piece of music obviously or you're actually following a proper piece of music then you obviously want them to kind of align properly and then place them wherever they need to be placed according to the actual music on the lines or obviously if you want it to be a little bit more stylized then you can literally place them hmm, kind of moving or dancing around on the lines there so it's completely up to you and the look that you're going for so in this case here I'm just going to kind of be placing them not correctly but just more kind of as they're moving on the lines themselves but obviously that's up to you and it doesn't matter anyway it's the same principle so it doesn't matter that you place them exactly where they're going to end up sitting because we can move them on the wires once we've attached them. So I like to kind of move up a little bit from the ring clamp there, but not all the way out to the end because that'll be a bit wobbly to work with, but just where we have a little bit of space here. And then I grab my length of fine wire and then basically we just again regardless of what note you're working with it's a matter of finding places on the note that we can then use to attach to the base wire underneath so in this case here I'm gonna start out because I haven't attached it yet just put my base wires to the side and then I want to I might as well just attach my 
fine wire here to the knot itself first of all. So I want to start right in the upper corner there you could kind of say. So I'm also trying to think of where it's going to be a little bit hidden if I can. So it's not going to be too obvious. So sometimes on some notes you'll have some wire overlapping. So there for instance you can sometimes do it where the wire is double layered. Do it on the bottom layered one. And then you have the other length of wire going over the top of it and basically hiding it. So for instance, just to show you what I'm talking about, that would be a note like this, because we have that double layer at the top. You could then attach it using the back layer, and then you have that other length of wire going over the top of it in the exact same path, and basically hiding the wire that we're using to attach with. But obviously, that's just kind of figuring that out as you go. So I'm just attaching this by wrapping it around a couple of times. Nice and tight. And then if you can kind of see, let me just grab my tweezers and nose pliers to kind of make them tight together. And I've just pushed it all the way up towards the top there for now. So this wire is now attached to the note. And I'm gonna grab my base wires and just hold it however you need to. Then we need to obviously make sure this is going to be placed where we want it to. So I'm just going to lay it on there and see basically where this then needs to be attached to the base wires. So is it going to need to be attached to the very top one for instance or the second one down? That's then also what you want to judge. So this note is going to lay across like that. And because I'm at the top, I think I'm going to be attaching this to the very top wire. So, so see it's coming from the back there. And then it's literally just a matter of attaching this by then going around that base wire as well. And again, I'm making sure that my wraps here are nice and tight. And you can always push them together with your pliers like I just did before. So attaching at the top there. And then again, this will kind of, if we can position it properly, just be ever so slightly hidden behind the actual top of the note itself where we attached it. And then again, this is really up to you as well how you want to do it and how secure. So you could go back and forth a few times if you want to. Obviously that will add more of this wire that you'll probably be able to see, but we obviously do want it to be secure enough. So let me just leave that for now. And I'm just going to cut off the excess. I do always kind of like to then leave short little tails. And then I'm going to go back at the end and cut off all the excess little tails. Just to kind of make sure that if I need to adjust anything, I can always go back and just use those little tails still. So that top bit is in place. So you can see it's attached to the wires now but I do want to just attach it somewhere else as well. So that would be, let me just get the base wires in place. And like I said, I want mine to kind of not be straight on the wire. I want it to kind of almost dance around, look like it's dancing around. So again, I'm going to attach this fine wire to the note first of all. And in this case, if you can see, I'm going to be using of this little tail I'm going to be using the bottom wire to do that so let me just do that first now obviously it's already attached to the base wires so can be a little bit more fiddly but just keep hold of it best you can so again I'm wrapping around that wire itself a few times so we attach it first of all Twice. I'm just going to do one more time. I do like to kind of use three wraps as a minimum as far as possible. Sometimes you can get away with two, but I prefer three if we can. 
and then the third time. And again, if you need to, I'm going to just squeeze the wraps together. So that's attached there. And then what I want to do is just spread my base wires in the right position because obviously they are attached down there at the bottom on the ring clamp, but they can still move around. There's nothing attached to them on the other end, so. I kind of just also make sure that they got the correct spacing as I go as I'm attaching my notes. I'm making sure of that as well. So let's have a look and see what base wire we need to attach this to. And I think by the looks of it, it's gonna be the middle one. So I'm grabbing hold. I have a little tail here. Just keep hold of that. And then I'm going to use the other end. The actual wraps are kind of pushed down to the very bottom of that tail there as far as possible. And then literally just use the other end here to wrap around the base wire. And just making sure it stays where I want it. And obviously I'm also holding the base wire is in place, but also making sure that that note is sitting how I want it to sit. So obviously if it was going to be straight, make sure it sits straight, but otherwise attach to this. And again, this, the wraps around the base wire kind of gets just nicely hidden underneath the bottom of this tail there. And you can always use pliers to adjust anything because it can be a little bit tricky to get in there with your nails or your fingers. But just to push that down and then let's do one more wrap. Something like that. Again, I just want to squeeze the wraps on the base wire together. So it's all sitting nicely in place. So it now looks something a little like that. Now don't worry too much about it still moving around and things like that because it will be moving around but as we go obviously and attach more notes they're going to gradually make their base wires more and more stable as well. And like you can see here I've not attached this specific note to all the base wires so that means some of them are still moving around more freely than others. So again as we attach more that will kind of fix itself along the way. But that is basically the first note here attached again. Cut off a length so I just have a short little tail left and then now what I can do is as you can see this can move up and down the wire so for now I'm just kind of pushing this down a bit and then I'm just gonna work up here and basically grab my next note and attach that with the same basic principles. So just, you can see I have a bit left here. I'm gonna use for the next note and then you can just keep cutting lengths of the point three as you need it, obviously, to attach more notes. So I've now gotten to a point where I'm gonna be attaching this kind of triple note. So I'll show you how to make it. So it's in two pieces. So I've already started attaching this first piece and I've done that like I explained previously, just in certain places where I feel like it would be nice and secure. And as you can see here, because we have multiple layers, it kind of runs over the top of some of the places where I've attached and camouflages it nicely. Now I have the other half here. Obviously we need to attach that as well. It's gonna be placed like this. Now obviously, it's the same principle here as if you're placing them straight on the lines but I just wanted to show you what I do because as you can see this other half of it I left a longer length of the actual wire that we made the knot with that's because I'm also going to use that to attach it with so just putting everything in place here I'm gonna have it how it's gonna be placed and then hold on to it because we might as well use that length there to actually also help attach it. So I'm then placing my pliers 
right below where I need to then make a bend. So I bend it backwards here. And then what we can just do, again before doing anything final, is just place it back on and just kind of keep checking that it's all going to fit nicely. So this is going to, what we're going to end up doing here is have this length of wire actually wrap around one of the base wires, which will obviously help secure it as well. So it's not just the fine wire that we're using for this specific one. So what I'm just going to do is grab some round nose pliers and just below that bend that we made, basically push the wire further around and it's really just to create a loop, something like that. It doesn't have to be too large or anything because we can then use that loop to basically slide onto the wire there. That's it gonna then, it's gonna be attaching to on the top part. So it's gonna sit something like that. I think that actually fits pretty well. Now what I then do is take my flush cutters and wanna go in and cut off the excess here now because we have the loop in place and it's in the right position. So I just go in and cut off the excess and I do also make sure to cut just basically a bit extra so it's not going to be the end of the wire isn't going to completely put up against the side of itself. I'm actually purposely leaving a bit of a gap and if, if anything even cut off just a little bit more than that because then I'm going to reattach it, so slide it over that top wire there and then just kind of bring it down into position. Then what I'm going to do is grab my tweezer nose pliers and we basically just want to tighten this up. So we want this loop that we just made to wrap around that base wire but just basically make it tighter which is what's going to help it stay in place as well. So tighten that up and then just have a look at it. You can already see it's attached now but I can still kind of just move it up and down obviously into the position where we need to have it finally. So it's attached now using that loop but then of course I want to actually attach the two pieces together as well because they're kind of loose from each other. And like I said, I did already kind of attach the other side here. So I can now just take a length of my 0.3 again, the fine wire. And basically I now, first of all, I do want to attach this that we just attached with the actual wire itself a little bit more with the 0.3 mil. But then also what I want to do is actually attach where these two separate pieces overlap. So they're going to end up actually being connected and kind of almost becoming one piece, but obviously we made it from two separate wires. So that's just around here where they actually overlap. And again, you're gonna have some overlapping wire that can help hide some of this finer gauge wire. So just to show you, that's how I like to attach these. Actually on these notes here, also if you're just making a single note without that tail, for instance, I also use the wire itself kind of finish off the note but then make sure it wraps around the base wire. So that's how you attach that. So now I attached all my notes here then you can see it looks a little bit messy but we're going to start to slowly take care of that now because like I said I just left all my tails as I was attaching them so that's what now I'm going to go back and do deal with here. So I'm literally just going to start from one end and go in and focus on one length at a time, little tail that I've got, and then just want to kind of see where it's coming from. So we can make sure 
that we finish it properly. So it's coming from behind there, but kind of sandwiched in between some layers of wire. So I'm just going to take my flush cutters here and go in and cut off the excess. And it's going to leave a short little tail, which I'm then going to make sure to get rid of by using my tweezer nose here and squeezing the wire. Kind of the wrapper it's doing continue. The wrapper obviously is just a short little end. So It's just to make sure that it's not sticking out anywhere and it's going to be able to catch or scratch on anything. And sometimes as well you'll be able to, in certain places, say tuck the wire in between, say the wires from a note and then the base wire itself. So kind of sandwich in between there and really get rid of it. But that's basically now what you just want to go through and do with all of them. Just take one tail at a time and gradually get rid of them all the way down until we have no more of these wires left. So now I'm just gonna show you how we finish off the ends here. So what I wanna do is obviously we need to use our ribbon ends to give them a nice clean edge there. So first of all, we need to cut down the wires. So I'm just starting on one end of the bracelet. I'm gonna show you in that, of course, it's the same on both of them. So, Made sure that all my notes there are in the position where I want them to be. And then you can kind of imagine we need to just account that a little bit of the wires are going to go inside the ribbon end. So what I'm going to do is cut down the three middle wires to a point where I have a little bit of space after that last or first note, depending how you look at it. So roughly about there and then I'm literally just going to use that wire to basically cut the others against. So I'm just putting my wire cutters the back against that wire to cut off the next one. And then again, the same with the last one. So like I said, that's just the three middle ones for now. So we have the two outer ones are longer here. And I'm doing that because I'm then gonna take my tweezy nose pliers or flat nose, whatever you wanna use. And we then want to grab onto just one at a time, the wire here, and basically create a bend, a little corner, and it's going to be right above where these wires in the middle end. So I'm grabbing onto that, and then I'm going to bend it towards the other side, and basically put in a 90 degree angle. So something like that. Of course we can just kind of tighten this up. So basically, this outer wire comes straight over the top, or kind of covers the very ends there of the wire that we cut off in the middle. And then the other side, I'm going to do the same thing. Just make sure it comes straight across. Need to bend the wire on the other side. So you can either place your pliers and bend them, or you can place your pliers and then bend the wire against the pliers. Either way is fine. Again, towards the other side. So that wire also crosses straight over towards the other side there. And we technically have the two wires now they're overlapping. So, to account for that, because we want to have this be as flat as possible, what we're going to do is cut off basically right around the middle. So I'm starting with the bottom length. I'm 
like that. And then, if I can just show you in the back there, I still have some of that length coming over the ends of the other wires, but just kind of get the wires in place. But it, it's cut off basically at the midpoint. So if I'm just putting everything into position here, we want to cut down the other wire at pretty much the same place so that when I've cut it off, the two lengths will basically meet right there in the middle and kind of the ends will butt up literally against each other. And for that, this is where I want to use my E6000 glue because it's going to add nice security. So I've got my ribbon end ready and I'm just going to apply my glue here with a toothpick and then we want to put it inside of the ribbon end. We don't need to fill it up completely, just kind of get it on the sides because obviously this will be clamped down and if we have too much glue in there it's just going to come spilling out something a bit like that I think and then I like to also take some glue that I have left on my toothpick and basically get it on the ends of the wires here so again I'm just gonna try and adjust this so it's basically sitting all the wires here in the position that I want them to be and obviously once we then attach the ribbon end it's going to help hold it all in place especially when the glue then dries so basically just get this all into position and then I just like to add glue over the ends there get it in between the wires it's a matter of taking the ribbon end, placing it over the top, and then basically I'm going to then use my flat nose pliers because they get a bit more of a grip to start to flatten this down. Now I like to just do it a bit at a time until I'm almost all the way flattened. So just play around with that until we're happy with it. Then I'm going to go in and do a nice tight squeeze with my pliers. So once we've finished off both the ends here, it appears that the bracelet is more or less done, but there is just kind of one more thing to deal with. So what you'll find is because we've obviously attached all these nuts to those straight base wires, and because the base wires are straight, the notes here will probably still be moving. So maybe some of them you might have managed to kind of attach quite tightly, but the chances are that they'll still be moving from side to side purely because the base wires are straight across. Now, obviously, if that doesn't bother you, then that's fine, you can just leave it. But if you'd like them to kind of stay in place, which personally I prefer, what you can do is just going to flip it around to the back here and basically it is getting out your glue again so I know that some people don't like to use glue with their wire work but it's literally just using it here to help keep these in the position that we obviously want them to sit in so obviously you can leave it out like I said but literally it's just taking a tiny little bit just a very little bit and again, I'm using that E6000 because it works really well with the wire and also it dries clear. And then it's a matter of obviously where you want it to kind of blend in so you won't be able to see it from the front. So say somewhere like here to capture some of the most likely the fine gauge wire there that we wrapped around with. But then also making sure to just get a little bit of glue on the actual base wire. And it's literally just a tiny little bit because then that helps adhere the two together nicely and just do that in several places obviously 
on all of the notes. So none of them will be moving around at all. And of course, leave that to dry as well. So it will literally become very, more or less unnoticeable unless you really look hard for it, but it's just to make sure that it's still, it all stays in place. So you can literally just go through and do that with all of them. So now I've let the glue dry both on the ribbon ends, but also the glue that I added to all the notes here. And you can see, I'm running my fingers along and they're not moving now. So that's how I kind of fasten them in the exact place that I want them to be. And that's gonna hold them nicely. So now all that's left to do with this is shape it so obviously we can actually wear it as a bracelet because it's a bit straight right now so for this I'm going to be using my bracelet mandrel here you can use anything you don't have to use the specific one anything that's kind of the size and shape you want your bracelet to have and then I'm just going to place this and I like to place it in the middle and kind of hold on to the middle there it's going to be the front and then start to bring the sides around the sides of the mandrel towards the back now it doesn't have to be a hundred percent from the mandrel here it's kind of just to get the basic shape in place because then we can always adjust it just want to do the other side as well here so bring it around towards the back So I'm just going to take it off and as you can see it looks a little bit funky but we can then go in and adjust that now. So first of all we want to obviously continue the shape because the aim is for these the two ends to actually meet up so we can use the clasp. And once you're then done shaping it here then what you might find on some of the notes is that for instance here we have one where it's got multiple layers. So part of it's kind of sticking out a little bit awkwardly. So instead of having it kind of just stick out like that, what I then want to do is just take my pliers and just gently kind of get it into the shape of the bracelet. So I'm just holding it down with my fingers on the one side and then just gently bringing it in towards. So basically putting a slight bend in it, you could say just so it starts going inwards and doesn't stick out kind of randomly like that. You can see the difference. So you can just go around and check anywhere where you might need to do that. Otherwise, the bracelet is now done and ready to wear. So that is how you can make your own music bracelet. And you can completely customize it to your personal taste, whether you want to make it free form or follow, for instance, a favorite song. So I really hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Now don't forget I already made a previous bracelet where I used the notes as charms and I also show how to make some of the notes in that one. So I'm going to leave a link to that in the description box below if you haven't seen it already. Otherwise thank you so much for watching this one and I'll see you in the next one.